Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. The overture to our symphony of horrors. F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu has now been casting its dark spell for over a hundred years, and you can see our take on that silent classic in our video, Nosferatu and the Horror Films of F.W. Murnau. But today, we're looking at E. Elias Merridge's reimagining of the film's making, carefully recreating key scenes, and boasting a first-rate what-if concept. What if actor Max Schreck really was a vampire, hired by a director obsessed with accuracy, passing him off as a method actor? Max Schreck will only appear to us in full makeup and costume as the vampire. One of the joys of this film is certainly the Oscar-nominated performance of Willem Dafoe as the troubled vampire. There was a time when I fed from golden chalices. Looking absolutely nothing like Shrek, but of course he's not playing Shrek and his own vampire is a thing of uneasy tension. Verging on pathetic, yet also dangerous. Tell me how you would harm me, when even I don't know how I could harm myself. The casting is good throughout. Udo Kier is ideal for the film's occultist producer and designer. I'm Alvin Grau, the producer. Eddie Izzard genuinely resembles actor Gustav von Wangenheim. And while the character of cameraman Fritz Arno Wagner may have been embellished for entertainment purposes, Kerry always has fun with it, and so do we. Did you get the shot? Yes, sir. And the gate is clean. The gate's clean, sir. As the director himself, John Malkovich embodies our perception of the dictatorial Teutonic director. I am the director! And it is that character that is the film's real focus, finding an interesting comparison in the obsessive creation of art. And you and I are not so different. Taking that old idea of putting literal blood into an artistic endeavor and personifying it in the vampire. Consider it a sacrifice for your art. And fans of silent film can also enjoy the recreation of movie making a century earlier, even if, as ever, it's not 100% accurate. And print it. Well, have we established pathos? In terms of narrative, we know very early on what Shrek is. There's no mystery there. The mystery is. How does this end? And that mystery is enhanced by a sense that Murnau doesn't know either. He just has to keep going, keep making the film, keep turning the handle, and what happens, happens. There is a morbid fascination to it that I really like. And it's a film made with terrific style and atmosphere. Feel your bag, make sure you have your contracts. That said, I do think the concept deserved a better ending. Hey! Who died? It feels made for the sake of the premise, but it's a great premise, so I'll let that go. The other caveat I will always have is that this is not F.W. Murnau. Thank God an end to this artifice! It's how we imagine German silent film directors, but at least by all accounts I've read, Murnau was polite, respectful, and ran a very happy set. Fritz Arno Wagner described how Murno would not say, do so and so, but rather, how would it be if you tried it like that? Alban, a native has wandered into my frame! What if premises work best when it is one change to the real world? What if Germany won the Second World War? This is, what if Max Schreck was a vampire? And Nosferatu was made by Fritz Lang, a more traditionally dictatorial director doesn't affect the film really, but it does affect how people see Murnau because they assume this is true, and that does bug me. Thanks for watching. Do you like Shadow of the Vampire? What other movie-related what-ifs would you like to see? Let us know in the comments below.